Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching Jurassic Park by Steven Spielberg, starring Sam Neill, Laura Dern, uh, Jeff Goldblum, and Richard Attenborough. Jurassic Park is a film from my childhood back in the mid 90s when I was, what, six or seven years old. I remember uh, being awed and I remember being fascinated with dinosaurs because of this movie. But that's the thing. Um, it's kind of like a fleeting memory. According to my parents, I loved the movie. But if you ask me now, I'm having a hard time recalling or remembering anything about it. Uh, I remember the huge T-Rex, um, other dinosaurs, and flashes of scenes here and there. N nothing concrete, if that makes any sense. I know the basic premise, though. Uh, some scientists bring dinosaurs back to life and uh, they make a theme park and some of them escape and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> I also remember the famous Jurassic Park theme because it's a classic. I've heard it plenty of times over the years. Um, it's interesting how uh, music kind of sticks with you, especially when you have a memory associated with it. Um, anyways, back to Jurassic Park. I'm very excited because... I am revisiting this classic after what more than 25 27 years for me it's like revisiting or even reliving my childhood just for a second <laughs> but before we get into it to help support the channel I have a patreon page for full length reviews and reactions to this movie and over 240 movies two TV shows early access movie peoples for what to watch next you'll need John coffee to watch along and the links in the description below Please consider being a patron, please subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you like this video, feel free to dislike it if you didn't. With all that being said, let's get started. Jurassic Park, Spielberg, Neil, Dern, Goldblum, Attenborough. Let's go. Jurassic Park. Looks like we're already at Jurassic Park. So the film starts with Jurassic Park already existing, huh? I kind of thought the first movie would be about the creation of the park, but apparently they've already done it. And knowing that it's a Steven Spielberg movie, I'm ready for the spectacle. <laughs> 120 miles west of Costa Rica, okay. So it's a, it's a, it's a self-contained island where Jurassic Park is. Smart idea. I mean, yeah, Steven Spielberg is one of the masters of blockbusters. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It made the most money in the 90s. Dude. I think this is a very necessary scene. Uh, because it's showing that dinosaurs, are, they're just animals with animal instincts. And you have to be really careful with them. Okay, that scene set the tone of the film. Dinosaurs are wild animals. Best not mess with them. <laughs> he had to leave early. He wants to be with his daughter. She's getting a divorce. Well, I understand that, but we've been advised to deal with the situation now. This is an amber mine, so they're probably mining for DNA or something. Fossils. What is that, a mosquito? I don't know too much about dinosaurs. I know some of them. Like uh, the T-Rex or the Velociraptor. Now we're in Montana. Dr. Grant, Dr. Sattler, we're ready to try again. We visited three different locations. Hey, it's Sam Neill and Laura Dern. Now look at the half moon shaped bones on the wrist. It's no one of these guys learn how to fly. More like a six foot turkey. <laughs> turkey, huh? Oh, no. He took it personally. He'll lose you if you don't move, but no. Not Velociraptor. He's about to scare the kid. You stare at him, and he just stares right back. Ooh. The other two raptors, you didn't even know were there. They hunt in backs. Six-inch retractable claw, like a razor, on the middle toe. <gasps> Stop it, man. You're traumatizing him. <laughs> here. Or here. Oh, wow. So, you know, try to show a little respect. <laughs> That kid, that this kid, he'll grow up with a healthy fear of dinosaurs. <laughs> hey, Alan, if you wanted to scare the kid, you could have pulled a gun on him, you know. What the hell do you think you're doing in here? 
Richard Attenborough. I'm a bigger fan of his older brother, Sir David Attenborough. So has this Hammond character been funding their research? I own an island <gasps> off the coast of Custer. He owns the island. And there's no doubt our attractions will drive kids out of their minds. And what are those? Small versions of adults, honey. <laughs> it's funny. Why would they care what we think? What kind of park is this? It's right up your alley. <laughs> We just dug up a new skeleton. Right. Well, I could compensate you by fully funding your dig. That's quite the offer. Uh, <laughs> where's the plane? <laughs> <laughs> he made them an offer so good they couldn't refuse. So why does he need their opinion though? Was it because of the accident at the beginning? Remember, viable embryos, they're no use to us if they don't survive. Oh, How am I supposed to transport them? Somebody's paying this dude to steel embryos the embryos have to be back here in san jose by then 18 minutes and your company catches up on 10 years of research oh, it's a rival company right okay that makes sense including jeff goldblum <laughs> we'll visit jurassic park i love jeff goldblum he's always jeff goldblum in every single movie he's in wow i wonder where they're shooting at did they actually scout out an island to shoot at? You can already tell it's a very expensive movie. Well, he improvised. That tells us a little about his character. What a beautiful shot, by the way. Again. I know Steven Spielberg, he's known to use special effects, but when he can do something practically, he prefers to do it practically. I'm also enjoying the score. It's very adventurous. 10,000 volts. Your investors, whom I represent, are deeply concerned. In 48 hours, I'll be accepting your apologies. Which dinosaur is it? Not only the visuals, but the score, man. I recognize the score. It's, it's a dinosaur. Oh, no. <laughs> Cold-bloodedness, it doesn't apply. It totally runs. It's a warm-bodied creature. A hundred percent CGI? I think so. But it's very good. We're gonna make a fortune with this place. <laughs> of course the suit says that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a T-Rex. Put your, put your head <laughs> yeah, that's that's that 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 would be my reaction right there. Oh man, this is so awesome. The score is awe-inspiring and the visuals. I mean, it's Steven Spielberg. Can you imagine watching this in the theaters in 1993? So what are you thinking? <laughs> We're out of a job. <laughs> Hello. Say hello. Say hello. 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 Hello, John. He's so cheesy. <laughs> oh, nice. John, that I <laughs> Relax, John. It's all part of the miracle of cloning. <gasps> Just one drop of your blood contains billions of strands of DNA. Right, they're learning about DNA and sequencing and stuff. We just had to know where to look. <gasps> the mosquitoes. And just like today, they fed on the blood of animals. I love how they're doing the exposition here. They extract the preserved blood from the mosquito and, bingo, dino DNA. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. Smart. They're using modern animals and filling in the gaps from their DNA with the dinosaurs. This is actually a plausible explanation, guys. This is realistic. It's literally a tour, a moving stage. So far, the performances have been stellar. Good day, sir. Hey, that's B.D. Wong. He looks young here. Big fan of that actor, especially his role in Mr. Robot. Oh, God. Oh, perfect timing. <sighs> Come on, little one. Come on. <laughs> Dude, no way, Spielberg. Come on. An animatronic prop, I'm guessing? Push. There you oh. go. Push. That looks amazing! 
is no unauthorized breeding in Jurassic Park. Or well, because all the animals in Jurassic Park are female. Mm. Mm, makes sense. Life will not be contained. Life. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. That's the line. That's his famous line I've heard. It's a, literally a meme nowadays. Life uh, finds a way. Decent pulley work. I like the sound effects. Sounds chaotic. 50, 60 miles per hour if they ever got out in the open. And they're astonishing jumpers. Yes, 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 yes. So that's why we're taking extreme precautions. They were testing the fences for weaknesses systematically. That's interesting. They remember. Implying that they're fairly smart. We can charge anything we want. 2,000 a day, 10,000 a day, and people will pay it. And then there's the merchandise. I can first Donald, pay Donald. Look at the suit with the money. Don't you see the danger, uh, John, inherent? Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah. I call the rape of the natural world. Well, the question is, how can you know anything about an extinct ecosystem? That's why they're on an island, so they can't escape. I don't believe it. You're meant to come down here and defend me against these characters, and the only one I've got on my side is the blood-sucking lawyer. <laughs> That's ironic. Thank you. <laughs> Calling him blood-sucking to his face. Grandpa! Kids! Yes, grandkids. I read your book. Oh, it's, it's great. Do you really think that dinosaurs turn into birds? Yeah, he's not good with kids. I heard that there's this, um, He's meteor, physically moving away from um, hit the earth. Dude, is that Samuel L. Jackson? It is Samuel L. Jackson! Holy crap! What do they got in there, King Kong? <laughs> You'd be surprised, my friend. The <laughs> Ellen. Ellen. It's probably hiding, right? Our lives are in your hands and you have butterfingers? <laughs> Dennis, he's about to betray them. God creates dinosaurs. God destroys dinosaurs. God creates man. Man destroys God. <laughs> man creates dinosaurs. T Rex doesn't want to be fat, he wants to hunt. There. Dude, Look, that's not see, a good idea. See, I'm right again. Uh, is there anybody else who thinks that we shouldn't be out here? Me. I don't think you should be out here. <gasps> oh, dude. Wow, what a beautiful animatronic. This is not CGI. I believe this is Stegosaurus. Wow, what a technical achievement. I totally understand why I was fascinated with dinosaurs when I was like five or six years old. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> Indeed. You sure? Yeah, I'm gonna stay with her a little longer. Okay then. So three things are happening at once. There's a storm approaching, that dude is trying to steal the embryos, and something bad's about to happen. Yeah, this dude is clearly going to get eaten by a dinosaur. Two, one. Yeah, this is clearly a very, very expensive production. There are so many scenes where Spielberg builds a set and they never come back to it. It's just built for that one five second scene. Fences are failing all over the park. <laughs> Find that dream. Check the vending machines. Check the vending machines. Oh no. This is more foreshadowing. The doors of Jurassic Park are opening. But if I recall correctly, he has an 18 minute window and he's going to mess up somehow. Where did the vehicle stop? <laughs> the vehicle stopped near the T-Rex enclosure. Holy crap, you're about to meet the T-Rex. Oh, I'm excited. You feel that? I hear it. <sighs> what a brilliant way to show it visually. Goat's gone. It's nearby. Where's the goat? <laughs> There's your lamb chop. Oh. Yeah, this is definitely excellent animatronics again. You can see the shadows. The lawyer left them. 
and the fence isn't electrified anymore. There's nothing between them. Can you imagine a five-year-old me watching this? Because I, I don't remember it, but I remember feeling it, if that makes any sense. It's amazing how well combined the CGI and the animatronics here. It's almost seamless. This probably gave me nightmares when I was young. <gasps> Flares. Oh wow, he's actually brave. Ian. <laughs> oh, what a scene. Things are serious now. But can he smell you though? Dude, what about the boy? This is so tense. <gasps> what about the boy? Dennis is lost. With dinosaurs on the loose. So it hasn't been 18 minutes yet. Is that one of those Velociraptors? We know Velociraptors hunt in packs. We know they're not that big, they're about 5-6 feet tall. Oh, is that Venom? Wow! I mean, it's horrific and all, but from a technical standpoint, how? Without CGI, because that, that wasn't CGI. He let us! He let us! But that's not what I'm gonna do. Dude, that little girl is a very good actor. Like the horror on her face. Cam! What an excellent film so far. You hear me out coming up? Poor kid. It's probably in shock. Traumatized. Hurt. Ian. Remind me to thank John for a lovely weekend. <laughs> <gasps> oh. But there are footsteps, they're alive. I think I get the general rule of thumb here. If it's a whole dinosaur being shown on screen, it's CGI. But if it's only part of a dinosaur, it's animatronics. Down! But what's so impressive is the CGI dinosaur face is exactly the same as animatronic one. How seamless is that? I hate trees. It's not a they bad don't idea. Me. Get off ground level. This is brontosaurus. I mean, a uh, brachiosaurus. Wow, what a shot. They're singing. The guy who doesn't like kids. Now he has two kids he has to look after. I don't know. What do you call my dinosaur? Do you think he saw us? Steven Spielberg, man. He can use his music so well. And I also like the fact that Spielberg slows his movie downs a lot sometimes. I wanted to show them something that wasn't an illusion. Yeah, like I said before. Something that was real. He's an idealist. His heart's too pure. Next time it'll be flawless. It's still the flea circus. The only thing that matters now are the people we love. Oh, it's morning! Here. <laughs> you know what this is? Eggs! It's a dinosaur egg. I thought they were all female. A lot of animals can change their gender. Some West African frogs have been known to spontaneously change sex from male to female in a single sex environment. That is true. Life uh, finds a way. <laughs> no, crazy. Dude, this picture of Jeff Goldblum is also a meme. Three minutes, I can have power back on the entire park. Well, now, look, just to be safe, I want everybody in the emergency bunker. I 
mean, yeah, I can tell it's CGI, this particular scene, but it's so well done. Where are they running from, though? I hope it's not the T-Rex. Oh, it is the T-Rex! All major theme parks had delays. When they opened Disneyland in 1956, mm -hmm. nothing worked. It ought to be me really going. And you're on... Look. <laughs> Come on, let's go. We can discuss sexism and survival <laughs> situations when I get back. You just take me through this step by step. I literally have no negatives about this movie so far. Probably the only thing I can talk about is the subplot of the stolen um, embryos. I wish they explored that a little bit more, but <laughs> no complaints. Mr. Arnold? Arnold is Samuel L. Jackson's character, I believe. Oh no, the lights are off. That means the fences aren't working. <laughs> what a crow. That's not funny. <laughs> that was great. <gasps> let go, kid, let go. Dude, would you survive a 10,000 volt shock? We're back in business. Is that a thing? <laughs> Whoa, what a jump scare. That actually worked. That was the first jump scare that actually worked on me in the movie. That was awesome. Oh, Mr. Dude. Arnold. No. Oh, dude, these are the Velociraptors. Oh man, we learned earlier that they attack from the sides, not from the front. Again, an example of excellent foreshadowing and great writing. Get you to a doctor. At least they made it back to the visitor center. <laughs> Eating all the desserts. This is awesome. I love the fact that the kids learned from their previous experiences. They were screaming before. Now they learned to keep quiet and lay low. <laughs> Amazing animatronics here. What a brave older sister. Should be safe now. I thought they were locked in the freezer, but apparently they locked one of them in. Ellie, boot up the tall locks! Call the mainland. Tell them to send the damn helicopters. Oh no, they're surrounded. Who thought the T-Rex would come save the day and get the hero music? That was awesome! After careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. <laughs> so have I. <laughs> oh, even he agrees. Good for him. He realized that it's too dangerous. But then again, we have a Jurassic Park 2, 3 and the recent movies. Oh man, it's hard to let go. I completely understand Hammond's point of view. That famous theme. Well, look who's come around to liking kids. The score is legendary. It was... The book was written by Michael Crichton and he also wrote the screenplay. No wonder, no wonder why the story is so good. It's actually been written by the author himself. There's another movie from my childhood that I do not remember at all, The Never Ending Story, and it's by um, Wolfgang Peterson. And I, I recently watched one of his films, uh, Das Boot, which was incredible. Um, if The Never Ending Story is worth watching as an adult, 
please let me know. Okay, I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was an amazing movie. Um, there are no two ways about it. Let's get that out of the way first. <laughs> Steven Spielberg is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time for a reason, a good reason. This took me straight back to my childhood, guys. Uh, I loved everything about it. The casting was great, so was the acting, directing, writing, score, and cinematography. But what made this film stand out was the incredible production and what the team achieved technically, both from a practical animatronic and visual effects standpoint. The way it was seamlessly combined for a film made in 1993, there are only a couple of movies that I can, that I can name that can, that can compare to it around that time, uh, probably Terminator 2 or The Abyss from James Cameron. I don't have any real negatives here. I just wish we got to see more of the secondary storyline, uh, the subplot of the corporate espionage. Um, I thought that was a little forgotten, a little neglected, because by the second act, it kind of resolves itself. But I guess most of the questions of, of the film, they were answered, and I felt very satisfied with the ending. Oh, and I wish we got more of Jeff Goldblum, simply because he's just awesome. <laughs> Let's start with the directing by Steven Spielberg and the script by Michael Crichton and uh, David Goep. Please correct me if my pronunciation is wrong. I love the fact that the writer of the novel also wrote the script for the film. And knowing Spielberg, he was probably very involved with the writing process too. The story had a very standard three-act structure. The first introduced us to the characters and the park itself. The second focused on how things go wrong and the dinosaurs they get on the loose. And the third was pretty straightforward with the main characters surviving and escaping at the end. Uh, even though the story was simple, I thought it was a good idea to keep it that way because there was quite a bit of exposition uh, for the audience to digest. Um, maybe adding five, ten minutes to the corporate espionage subplot would have piqued my interest even more. But I totally understand the decision of the filmmakers of not exploring that. Even though the scope of the film felt grandiose, it was... It ultimately was a pretty intimate story about these five or six characters. This is what Spielberg does so well, right? Or structures these characters and every, every single one of them has their own story arc, if that makes any sense. Um, so I completely am behind that. The casting and the performances, they were, they were also great. Jeff Goldblum in particular, as you know, he was, he was, he's my favorite guys. And, um, so was Laura Dern, Sam Neill, Richard Attenborough, and the two kids. I don't think there were any weaklings here at all. Uh, let's talk a little about the dinosaurs, which I guess they were the centerpiece of the entire film. What can I even say, guys? Uh, from the entire explanation of how they came to life, or they were brought back to life, to the actual dinosaurs themselves, they were spectacular, uh, especially from a design perspective. But most importantly, they felt realistic. And the explanation of how they came to life, that was fairly plausible, right? Especially the idea of supplementing dinosaur DNA with modern creatures. I, I who would have thought? And speaking of dinosaurs, holy crap. How good was the production end? Mo the most impressive part of the film for me it was the technical achievement. The CGI was the best for its time. Um, apart from the shadows and uh, the subsurface scattering of the light, the animations of the dinosaurs themselves, the movements, I mean, they were convincing. But honestly, the CGI was all well and good. I could tell it's CGI, but the animatronics sold me. Uh, they looked and sounded real. Whole I, I was awed. The skin textures, the breathing, the eye movements, um, they were all so well done. I had a hard time telling that they were not real animals. I mean, I could tell the CGI scenes, but the shot of that T-Rex, the head, wow. Um, finally, the sound design and score, which I have the highest praise for. The dinosaur sounded menacing with low bass notes, and I think there was some 
top tier foley work done to make everything seem authentic especially out in the forest i don't think it was it was a forest out in the wild i mean i can imagine a lot of research being done uh, to get the sounds as close to real as possible the score here turns out it was done by the legendary john williams that man has a resume as long as the letters of a dna sequence <laughs> it's long guys the main theme was not was is a timeless classic and it's iconic it was inspirational and adventurous and at the same time it didn't lose its heart and its emotions if that makes any sense oh so good as i've talked about my zero criticisms already overall jurassic park by steven spielberg was amazing not only were the performances story visual visual effects uh, practical effects not only were they engaging the directing was spectacular complemented by the excellent script from michael crichton and the iconic score from john williams the good news is that all of that gets overshadowed by the breathtaking scope of the production team's ability to bring these dinosaurs to life i'm happy i got bought back to my childhood a little bit and i have to admit that this is in fact a landmark cinema when it comes to pure spectacle do let me know if the sequels are worth reviewing anyways thank you for watching i have a patreon page considering a patreon please subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for instant notifications do check out my other videos like if you like this video dislike it if you didn't i will see you in the next one bye